Hey everyone, Nick Chamberlain here, and I just wanted to let you know that we are coming out with new episodes very soon. So stay tuned, and you're going to love what we have to offer inside the offer. Hello and welcome to Inside the Offer, a podcast that is dedicated to connecting and bringing life to those who are on a mission to provide for their family by building their own successful business. We believe that the key to standing out in the crowded world of entrepreneurship is having a unique offer that sets your business apart. Whether you're a stay-at-home parent looking to create a side hustle, a recent college graduate with an entrepreneurial spirit, or a seasoned business owner, this podcast is for you. We'll sit down with individuals who have navigated the unique challenges of self-employment to share their stories and insights. We'll uncover the paths that have led them to where they are today and the strategies they use to build and grow their businesses. Don't forget to hit subscribe on your favorite podcast catcher so together we can inspire each other to reach our goals and create a fulfilling future for our families. Let's go. Hello and welcome to Inside the Offer podcast. I'm your host, Nick Chamberlain, and I'm thrilled to bring you episode number two, our first interview ever. And today we have a very special guest joining us, Mr. Pat Flynn from ChroniclesOfStrength.com. So Pat, he is an accomplished author, speaker, podcaster, fitness trainer, entrepreneur, and most importantly, a devoted husband and father of five. We have a great conversation discussing how he built his online business, the power of direct response marketing, and how he structures his offers in his business. If you ever wanted an inside look into how a successful online business runs and operates, then you do not want to miss this episode. Let's get started. Hey, Pat Flynn. How's it going, man? Nick, it it goes very well. It is good to be with you today on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Thanks. So, Pat, you are my very first guest ever on Inside the Offer, and we just spent a good amount of time about just talking about your podcast and just kind of outlining, you know, my podcast. So I do appreciate all the advice you've been (laughs) providing for me already before we get started. So Inside the Offer is going to be a look into Every, different people's business and just kind of like how they got started out. So it can pretty much help anyone who's listening right now who is kind of getting started, who has already started, or if you're already a veteran, then thank you for joining me <laughs> and listening to me. So Pat, let's, I would like to talk about your very first offer that you've ever offered someone in your life where someone gave you your first dollar for providing a service or a product. Okay. Wow. So, um, that's going to take me, <laughs> that's going to take me way, way, way back before my actual, oh, actual okay. business. Um, what was the, okay, here's a really strange thing where I realized that I might, might be an entrepreneur. Um, so in early middle school, we had this sewing class cause you, there was something you could take in middle school. And I, I, at that okay. point I was just looking for like a goofy class to take with my friends. So we took this sewing class <laughs> and we had an assignment to go and, and sew things. And, um, me being the demented middle schooler that I was, I had a box of beanie babies <laughs> from when I was in elementary school. So I cut them all up and I put like the head of one beanie baby on the body of another with the arms of another and like just made these <laughs> utter abominations, right? Like a, the body of a platypus with a head of a giraffe and they were horrifying, right? But people loved them and I started selling them and I actually made a bit of money in middle school selling these just, oh my gosh. just okay. complete abominations. And that, that told me that there's something, there was a deep lesson in there I didn't fully appreciate is that a really good offer, something that's really unique, sells itself. I didn't have to write a sales letter mm-hmm. for these things. Um, they were just very funny to people and, you know, reasonably priced. And so they sold out very quickly. And then I got bored and obviously I, you know what? I probably, I probably left yeah. a, a billion dollar business on the table by not expanding <laughs> that. So if anyone wants to take That's that, funny. take that up and run with it, go with it. But that was, that was the first time I, I think I ever realized, wow, I can do something kind of creative, stupid at that point, but yeah. creative and yeah. make money. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Okay. Wow. Yeah. You kind of started off really early there. Do you want the, do you want the real, the real one, the real business offer that I made? <laughs> oh yeah. No, I get, but no, that's a really good <laughs> advice. It's just kind of like yeah. a really good offer doesn't need, you know, a, a big sales page behind it. People just want it and they're coming to get it just like in the hallways. I don't even know how you were selling those back. Yeah, then. it was in, it was in school till the <laughs> teachers got super annoyed by it. Um, and you know, well, and that's, that's right. You know, every good marketer will saying like, what is, what is the number one thing that, uh, a hamburger stand owner needs. People are like, oh, he needs good copy, good advertising, a good brand. But the right answer is he he needs a hungry crowd, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> yep, exactly. So, some so, like some group of people that that offer is going to be just really inherently initially appealing to, right? And then everything else is just yeah. icing on the cake, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So let's do, yeah, let's move forward to your first, I guess, professional offer where you develop this offer into your business. Yeah, so this will be early college now, so still relatively young. And for people okay. who are just unfamiliar with my background, it's it's very eclectic. I went to school for economics and philosophy, but while I was in in college, I was uh, doing a lot of personal training, uh, especially with kettlebells. If you ever seen those things, they're like a cannonball mm-hmm. with a handle on it. People use them to work out and stuff. I love them. And I was blogging at the time, and um, and doing YouTube videos on all sorts of stuff. You know, I always blogged on everything that interests me. But people mm, mm-hmm. gravitated towards the fitness stuff and kettlebells, and I uh, kind of inadvertently began to build an email list um, a little bit more intentionally over time. As smarter people advised me that that was the intelligent thing to do if I really wanted to make a business out of it. And uh, mm-hmm. anyways, I was kind of becoming known uh, for certain types of kettlebell workouts, kettlebell complexes. And a complex is where you just take one kettlebell and you just perform a bunch of exercises back to back with n- little to no rest in between. So it's really intense. You feel like you get a great workout in a short amount of time. It's very minimalist, mm-hmm. very efficient. Uh, and so people were gravitating towards that. And and I, I paid attention to that. I said, okay, this is something that is attracted to people because it's sort of a unique way of d- giving them the fitness benefits they want, better body composition, fat loss, calorie burn, strength, endurance. Like you get all the things you kind of want for fitness and like one workout simultaneously, right? So I've got this kind of mm. offer brewing in the back of my mind. And so I thought, you know, why don't <laughs> okay. I just try and why don't I just try and uh, put something together and and sell it? So I put together my first little little ebook. Ter- mm-hmm. <laughs> terribly produced thing. You know, I'm in early college. I know nothing about this. Uh, I just I saw that people did did ebooks. And, you know, I think there's a lot of value in just kind of like diving in and, and being willing to make a mess and figuring things out as you go because mm-hmm. I think one thing that stops people from from really doing anything, but especially starting a business, is they try and figure everything out before they do anything, and then they get overwhelmed, and they're like, ah, I quit, right? Uh, <laughs> I never did that, man. I just, I just was like, I think I can do this. I'm just going to start doing it. And then I would make a huge mess, and I would clean some of it up and, and refine and figure things out as I went. So anyways, I made this little ebook. <laughs> it was called The Birth of a Hero. So it wasn't even that great of a title, but it was you know kind of like superhero-themed, like become a superhero with a kettlebell. And I sent a couple of probably very poorly written emails to my relatively small list to sell this thing. And it wasn't priced very much. It was like 10 bucks. And I remember on the first day, I had mm-hmm. made like 1500 bucks. And as a college oh, wow. student, I was like, holy mudcats. I just made, I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. I'm rich. I quit college. Uh, you know, so like, you know, like, wow. Like, that, like, it, like I was not expecting that. I was yeah. not expecting that. Uh, but that to me was like, and again, there was a million things wrong with, with what I did. Like any uh, professional copywriter marketer would be like, you forgot to do this. You forgot to do that. They could have exploited But the point was, I made an offer. People bought it. Mm-hmm. They were happy with the product. And I proved to myself that I could do this, that I could mm-hmm. make something that people were interested in, charge money for it, give it to them, and they would be satisfied with the product, which was actually, you know, and not only that, but they would ask like, hey, when's the second edition coming out? <laughs> right. It was really yeah. exciting. So that was the first offer I ever made, just a cheap, cheap ebook online to an email list. You know, it didn't flood me with money, but it made me more money yeah. than than I had had at the time or ever made before. And like that just excited me. It motivated me and gave me the confidence to think like, this is possible. I could, I could do this. Yeah. How long were you doing the free content uh, for, or creating the content about all the, the kettlebell workouts before you released this first ebook? Oh, probably about a year, year and a half, maybe even okay. a little bit longer than that. Um, and, you know, out of just kind of pure interest, hobby, yeah. enjoyment, I never even started that with the intention of ever selling anything, you know? 
Uh, I just always mm -hmm. liked creating content, filming, uh, terrible YouTube videos, blogging, writing. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of funny. Again, it was just an instance of me just kind yeah. of diving in, wanting to do something with no, with not even a greater plan in sight. But eventually, I got to the point of thinking, "Hi, huh, I wonder if I could just make a little ebook out of this." Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, you're mm -hmm. right. It was that time spent up to it of creating content, and this was, you know, this was many years ago. This was back when it was a bit easier easier to get, I guess, social reach on uh, certain mm. platforms, especially mm. like Facebook and stuff than it is these days. But YouTube, Facebook, I was also engaged a lot in a lot of forums back then, like kettlebell forums. So like, okay, um, yeah. and uh, and in my uh, signature of the forums, I would always have like a link to my website and to get my free ebook and get on an email list. So there's a lot of different things I was doing at the time that was like getting getting people on the email list, which would eventually, you know, um, uh, set them up to to have the offer made to them. So that whole book was a, a promise to get them, not a promise, but it was all of your workouts that you created in one ebook. So people went through that whole process of, well, wow, he gave me so many different exercises to do for yep, free. Yeah. So, so the hook was a minimalist kettlebell program saying, hey, if you just have one to two kettlebells okay. and, you know, 15 to 20 minutes of time, I will give you one of the best workouts of your life where you can train. So the offer is here, you can train strength cardio mobility muscle flexibility all in a single workout all at home if you want it's going to be intense you're going to feel great uh and it's super efficient so that's that's the appeal that's the offer okay i guess uh just a, a quick quick question then what's the difference between like a hook and an offer or yeah. how do those relate to each other good so when i when i think of a well, i guess i would maybe think about it like this um okay a good offer is one that has a hook. A bad offer is one that doesn't, right? And and a hook is something <laughs> a hook is something where there's a promise attached to an element of curiosity. That's what a hook is to me. A hook is where there's a promise attached to an element of curiosity. So maybe a hook is something like this. Hey, um I will help you to burn uh twice the calories in half the time through high intensity kettlebell complexes. That's a hook. Mm. Why? Because mm -hmm. there's a promise, burning calories, which people want to do, and it's in a hooky way, you know, with the kind of mm -hmm. uh, construction of double and one half, right? So play with numbers. That's always good for hooking. But then there's an element of curiosity. Kettlebell complexes. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Those sound like, what is that? There should be always something that kind of leaves somebody pondering about the hook, right? So there's something clear. Here's how I would put it, Nick. There's something clear in a hook, and there's something mm -hmm. intentionally ambiguous in a hook. The clear thing is really attractive and appeals directly to what your audience wants to achieve. And the intentionally ambiguous thing is a thing that makes them want to learn more, to look deeper mm. into the offer, right? It's the unique angle that you're taking. Another great example of this in fitness, not mine, but has obviously done well, is this whole notion of muscle confusion by P90X. Remember them? Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, they, they, they were a brand that had a hook. I mean, there's nothing like truly revolutionary about their system of exercise. It's all, you know, fine stuff, but they, they came up with this, this hook of muscle confusion, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And people were like, huh, what is that? And then they would go on to explain it and, and show how that hook would deliver the benefits people were looking for. And that like just boom, exploded uh, that brand, right? So with you, with your ebook, after someone goes through, through it and has it. So how do you get them to the, the next level of becoming a, um, I guess right then everyone's just kind of learning and eating up everything you're providing. How do you lead them into a paying customer? Uh, okay. So this is, this is different than what I just um, talked about before. Cause that, that yeah. first offer that I talked about was, a, was a paid thing that, that ebook, right? Um, oh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. So that was an ebook. Okay. So yeah. that was a, so you are then selling this ebook, you're getting some income and you're like, wow, this is, this is, a, this is a business right now. What made yep. you want to keep going with this? Or what was like kind of your next step into making your business into like the next level from yep. content marketing of, uh, and producing ebooks to what's the next step? You yeah. Go good, good, good question. There's, there's, there's two ways I want to come at it. Cause what you said before wasn't wrong. I do have also free ebooks that people can get to get on my email list as well. So I mm. had I had free ebooks even before the one that I sold to get people on my email list, but then I created oh, okay. a more robust one to actually sell, right? Uh, uh, and okay. then eventually we did do a, a paperback version of it as well. All right. So from there, then if we're just tracing historically, uh, well, what's the what's the natural thing that any uh, you know neophyte like myself at the time would have done? <laughs> um, 
let's sell another ebook, right? <laughs> let's okay. Write a, write another ebook and sell it. But and, and like that does well. That does okay. And you come up with new hooks and you you sell another ebook and program mm-hmm. and you get another kind of influx of cash. Maybe you even do do better than the first. But you realize mm-hmm. that that's that's sort of that's sort of self limiting. There's only so many ebooks you can write and uh and uh, at at some point what you learn and what i learned is is you can't just kind of like go horizontal with your offers keep offering like variations on the same thing you have to go you have to go vertical right you have to you have mm-hmm. to offer uh kind of things on a different scale if you will so uh i was fortunate actually one of my fitness customers was himself a really brilliant marketer owned his own business so he kind of took me under his wing and he's like hey pat i see you've kind of like uh, trying to be a bit of an autodidact in this internet marketing world. Well, I've been at this at a while here. I'll, I'll show you all the things you're doing wrong. And he did <laughs> and helped me do things right. Yeah. yeah great guy. Uh, ended up charging me a good amount of money. So he got his, got his money's worth from, from me, but, but it was, it was, it was worth it for both of us. Uh, so anyways, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. So he's like, Pat, you, you can write eBooks. That's fine. That's good. Uh, but you, what you also want to have in place or, are, are other, um, services that you offer people you, you need some mm-hmm. sort of subscription service right you want some way to get predictable ongoing revenue right so like mm-hmm. let's think about getting a subscription service where people pay you some fee every single month it's ongoing it's recurring you should think about doing higher end intimate services like uh, coaching and consulting that sort of thing maybe group coaching you have different scales of that right you should think about doing in-person events workshops mm-hmm. certifications and you should think about doing courses as well, and not just not just uh, courses and ebooks, but you should also think about just doing short, quick things like little challenges. So now you can see like there's this huge sort of mm-hmm. spread, or even like a hierarchy. I kind of think of it as like mm-hmm. a, as as like a, a pyramid of offers, not a pyramid scheme. I don't like those, but a pyramid of offers where there's things that are kind of at the bottom of the pyramid. They're lower priced, they're more accessible, but it'll serve a ton of people, hopefully. Then there's kind of stuff in the middle of the pyramid. Maybe it's a, a subscription service, a little bit more expensive, but more predictable ongoing revenue. It'll still serve, hopefully, a good number of people, but probably not as many as the stuff at the bottom. Then you keep moving up. Maybe you start getting into group coaching and coaching, more expensive, more intimate, fewer people. Keep pushing up. Maybe you have really intimate, uh, more expensive, mm-hmm. like on in-person certifications, stuff like that there's courses somewhere in the middle around there right so there's a people can kind of go up and down the pyramid as customers mm-hmm. they might come in at a challenge go up to a subscription or maybe they might even come in for coaching and when coaching is done they'll go to your subscription service and then maybe back up to your certification so you're not just having um mm-hmm. more things to sell to more people but more things to sell to the same people as well and one of the things that my marketing mm-hmm. coach always impressed me he says look it's always, 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 as long as you do a good job, so much easier to get a repeat customer than it is a new customer. And that was something he always emphasized to me. Getting a new customer, that's the hard thing. But if you do a good job and you know somebody buys from you once and they like what you're doing, it's so much easier to get that second and third sale that if, you're, if you don't have places for them to go after that first sale, you are really dropping the ball as a business owner. Mm, okay, wow. Thanks for all that, Pat. Sure. For me, since I'm you know, fairly, fairly new to all this business stuff. Um, launched the Every Word Media uh, full service podcast production company back in May 2022. <laughs> it's only a couple of months ago, but I, I've been doing it for the whole, the freelance um, audio production for a while. Now with my business, I'm starting off at the top of the pyramid. So I'm, star- mm-hmm. I'm starting with just the one on one high ticket offer. I think for me, because then I can actually develop the systems and l- learn how everything works. And then I'm going to start going down the pyramid a little bit. Then mm-hmm. from doing the one-on-one, maybe a little more hand-holding, the little bit of coaching. And then eventually I would like to create some kind of course or some more content on where people can actually learn and how to do everything on their own without having me, you know, to pay me to do it for on the one-on-one. <laughs> so all of that pyramid no, oh my gosh, I want to say pyramid scheme. I know it's so bad saying pyramid in a marketing context. Everyone thinks you're like about to get them like enlisted in some type of supplement scheme or something. Like that. Um, so yep. you're, you're okay. So part of your offer, you at this point, you're going from your ebook to now developing a lot of different offers at different, you know, levels of people. Um, 
from helping them out one-on-one. Are you doing coaching, one-on-one coaching for this kettlebell? I am. Yep. I've been doing online coaching for many, many years. I'm still doing it now. And it's funny because you broke it down into categories. I like to think about it in terms of service and services and and offers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. There's like high end stuff where it's like, I'll do it for you. Then there's like middle of the road stuff where I'll help you do it. And then there's like bottom of the road stuff where like, I'll teach you how to do it. Right. Yes. And different levels of involvement and intimacy. So with fitness, like it's not like podcast production where you can literally do something for somebody. Like I can't literally eat food for people and do their workouts for them. That'd be pretty sweet, right? And probably charge a decent penny for that, but it's just not (laughs) physically possible, right? The most I can do is like really tailor a program for them and try and provide them Mm -hmm. with a lot of accountability and personalized feedback. So it's like pushing the, I'll help you do it as far as you can, right? And then, you know, you can kind of scale back in degrees from there to the point where you're just like, Mm -hmm. hey, I'll teach you what to do. Here's a challenge, but there's no like personal accountability or personalization or stuff like that. So I just, I think that is a helpful way to kind of break down the, the way you might offer things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think for your top tier, like one-on-one coaching, or you should just fly out to their house, cook all their and Watch me meals, eat steamed chicken. And then, yeah. and then you, <laughs> watch you me eat hand, it, yeah. <laughs> give it to them. Like, this is how you eat. This is what you need to do. And I'll feed you. Yeah. I'll, I'll walk you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You could not pay me enough money to be that type of glorified babysitter. Right. <laughs> but somebody might be willing no, no, to do it. Yeah. So good for you yeah. guys. Yeah. Uh, so that'd be like a top tier offer. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I think that's also like the importance of finding a mentor of someone to help you teach you to go on to like these different levels. So you're just creating eBooks, you're selling them. And then how do you find your mentor or person to learn from, to take your business to the next level? Yeah. So for me, I mean, it was, it was, yeah, yeah, it was, it was sheer, um, it was just sheer providence ultimately, um, that I, that one mm-hmm. of my customers just happened to be somebody who was very successful in the direct response marketing world. Right. But however, that being said, um, you know, preparation, opportunity, all that sort of thing, you know, mm-hmm. I, I had a mindset for quite some time, especially as a young musician who, uh, I always had instructors growing up. I knew the value of mentors. I knew the value of coaches, right? I knew that coaches equaled shortcuts, that they were worth the investment, mm-hmm. and that you would be a fool to try and do something without a mentor or a coach. So I did have the good mindset. I had coaches in fitness. Uh, I had coaches in martial arts. I had coaches in music, everything, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I totally understood that coaches uh, were something you needed to have. They were shortcuts. And like at best, you're you're just not being efficient if you don't have a mentor in your life in some capacity. So that was happening to me because I was trying to figure out how to do this whole podcast production business. And then at the right time, at the right place, I get to watch a YouTube video by this guy named Brian Hood, who was just talking about if you're just starting off your business, you need to get to the next level and actually learn how to get clients. Because I was like, I don't know how to get clients. I need to get clients, you know, in order to start building my business. And then it was just, I remember he offered something like that a couple of years ago and I was not there yet, but when he did offer it again, I was ready to go. So when I did submit an application to be part of the program, I was able, he, I was approved. And so I could actually start going yep. through the, the program. And then I just like, I'll talk about like how we find the mentors so for me. It's just kind of like, I been listening to a bunch of people and trying to figure out like, okay, who do I I guess vibe with who do I don't vibe right. with do I like their personality do I not like it do I see success in what they're doing so yeah. now I'm trying to go after people it's like okay they're kind of like the next step above me and they are being successful so I'm yep. going to try to learn from them so it's yep. just always trying to take like the next step forward yeah I, look if you really love something and you want to find a coach and a mentor then just dive into that into that world watch all the mm-hmm. youtube videos listen to all the podcasts read all the books and like you'll be surrounded with potential people that you can reach out to and, and hire and like mm. uh, it's not that uh, it, it, the problem isn't like i don't know where to find mentors it's just there's so many ways to find mentors <laughs> i don't know where, you know <laughs> where to help people start right so you just dive into the world get get 10 good books on it right Yep. And watch all the YouTube videos, listen to all podcasts, and like pretty yeah. quickly you'll get it. You'll get a pulse of who's on the scene and who's worth following and what your options are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I guess just for people starting off, like someone like me too, it's like I can't go straight to the <laughs> smart passive income Pat Flynn. I can't go straight to John Lee Dumas. I can't go straight to Alex or Mosey and like just learn, you know, one on one, learn from them. 
so and it's like, how do you find other people like in the industry and the space who you want to learn from? I get mm-hmm. just connecting and networking, going out there to events, watching their YouTube videos. Um, yeah, that's it. Or- I mean, so <laughs> business is a, is a little bit different and it's, and it's kind of interesting. So music is, music is, I think, easier to find mentors because there's a lot of great musicians that give lessons just because they like never made it, but they're still great musicians. Um, but business owners are a little bit different because mm-hmm. if you're a successful business owner, uh, like, like me, I, I would count myself in that category. I don't teach business because I don't want to. I just run my own business. Right? <laughs> right? It's like, yeah, right. I'll talk about <laughs> it. Right. But but it's like, you know, like these guys are just doing it right. They don't need to they don't need to to teach. And, and, and but there's also the the other worry. Right. And this is this is not true for music. Like for music, you can tell when somebody's a hack. Play your instrument. OK, you're not any good. I'm not hiring you. But with business, it's kind of like people aren't putting their bank accounts and their tax returns out mm-hmm. there up front. So it's like people can say a lot of stuff and you don't always know if that is true or not. Or at least it's not as easy to tell as it is would be with, say, like a great musician or even mm-hmm. a great writer. Like you read somebody like you're, you can tell if they're a great writer or not. Right. Um, so yeah, I guess what I'm saying here is I think it takes a little bit. Uh, a little bit more um, you have to be better at discernment in the business world mm-hmm. to find a good mentor uh, where it might be easier in in other worlds like it was um, like I, I I never really found too many people uh, all my guitar instructors were great uh, all my martial arts instructors were great all my writing coaches were great because it was pretty easy for me to tell who the great ones were right away I have interacted with a number of people who claim to be business experts but were actually pretty terrible mm-hmm. broke Total hacks, mm-hmm. stuff like that, mm-hmm. uh, and it's it's harder to tell that up front. Uh, so you do you do have to be discerning, and I would just encourage people to keep an eye out. Right, mm-hmm. I've gone through a bunch of you know g- gurus in the past couple of years, and it is kind of difficult to find the some like someone who's kind of at the next step that you want to follow, and. Uh, I don't know if I want to get into that. Uh, I was like, uh, you have to go, you might have to be burned a couple of times for you to actually understand and learn like, ah, uh, that was not the path to go that down. Was, that right. was not the right business connection or yep. uh, it's like, that was not the right formula to follow. I mean, there's really no easy shortcut. You just got to put in the work and kind you of do. Just and you have to be willing to, yeah, exactly. And look, sometimes you'll, you'll have a bad call. You might have a bad mentor for mm-hmm. some time, but you know, there are good ones out there, really good ones out there. So, uh, yeah, baby bathwater, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of what I want to use this podcast for is to interview people like you, Pat, and just to figure out, okay, what's actually working for you and in your business. And hopefully people don't have to go through as many, you know, hoops and obstacles and, and like trying to decipher who do I follow? Who do I not follow? And so I want to continue to interview, interview successful people like you and to see what works best for you and try to take some of those lessons and put, apply them in my own business. And hopefully the people, you know, who are listening can apply some of those lessons in their business as well. Just kind of moving a little forward in your, your business, where are you at right now with your, the services you offer and the different levels that you are offering to people? Yeah. So, I mean, fundamentally, it's not too different than when I started because mm-hmm. like what, what I realized from that first initial offer um, was that I had a good offer, right? People really liked and resonated with this kettlebell thing, workout efficiency, fitness minimalism, and also this idea of fitness generalism. Part of my message and my offer is like, hey, don't worry about being the best in the world at any one thing. Uh, not everybody has the genetics to be the best, but everybody has the genetics to be better. I didn't make up that saying, but I do borrow it. Um <laughs> So if you want to just be good to great or at least fairly competent, like across the board, then, you know, Pat Flynn's your guy, right? Uh, we can we can get you mo- the vast majority of the fit- fitness results you want in minimal time, which is a simple piece of equipment uh, called the kettlebell. So I realized, hey, I think mm. I've really got something that, that, that resonates here. Like this is a good offer. And I've also got a pulse on the kinds of people that this resonates with. Uh, so really what I work to do from that, Nick, is just kind of expand – uh, that offer and run different themes around it uh, in different ways until I got to where I am now, which is, yeah, I guess if we were to kind of go up and down the high, I'll avoid using the term pyramid, but hierarchy of services, hierarchy. right? Yeah, I like that. At the at the kind of bottom, I have different uh, just kind of like 
introductory programs and challenges. So I've got like, for example, one that has done very well for me over the years. I think it's got a good hook too. It's called my 300 Swings Kettlebell Challenge. been doing this for almost 10 years now. We do usually two a year and it's just, hey, you're going to do 300 kettlebell swings a day for 30 days. It's very intense, but very minimalist, really great for boosting your you know aerobic capacity and burning calories. So stuff like that's kind of at the bottom. We've got just a plethora of different kind of cool, unique kettlebell challenges and shorter term programs. Uh, then the next step up from that is my uh, subscription, my membership website, and that's called Strong On. Mm-hmm. And this is, again, kind of like more of doing it for you. And this is ongoing minimalist kettlebell workouts. So every day somebody can log in. There's a virtual chalkboard. The workout sort of written on the chalkboard. Here's what you're doing that day. The idea, again, is very minimalist. You just log in. You do the workout. You get awesome results. And then there's, you know, other perks that come with membership too. But for people who just want that, mm-hmm. just tell me what to do, Pat. I don't want to have to think about this. You know, just be my kind of virtual trainer from afar, uh, that is strong on and pricing for that. Uh, if people are interested in that, I charge a hundred dollars up front and then it's $20 a month after that. And I found that that's a good pricing structure. I've tested a lot of different ranges on that. The hundred dollars up front is not an arbitrary fee because membership includes a lot of past programs and challenges. So they're getting a okay. lot of content for that initial hundred bucks. So it's, it covers that. And it's also just to be fair for paying members who've been around for a long time. Yeah, go ahead. And then. Mm-hmm. Does your the um, intro challenges do those cost money to do the challenges or are those free challenge? Oh yeah, yeah. Those 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 will range anywhere from like uh, twenty to fifty ish bucks depending on their, their length and and commitment okay. and stuff like that. Because I've heard a lot about yeah. challenges and I didn't know if those were like free challenges, kind of like to generate leads or something, or yep. or if most challenges are paid programs. Yeah. So what I'm talking about now is my hierarchy of paid yes. offers. Okay. Hierarchy Surra- of paid surrounding offers. Surrounding that to get people uh, okay. to that, I've got all sorts of free stuff, free ebooks. Okay. I do have a couple free challenges. So yeah, in but that's in the those are the outposts I call them. They're outposts. Um, oh, okay, cool. So, so just to, for example, I've got a free ebook called 101 Kettlebell Workouts." Again, kind of like a hook there. 101 is kind of an odd number, kind of curious, right? Numbers are good in marketing, especially odd numbers. And free kettlebell workouts to um, blast fat and boost muscle in like 20 minutes a day or something. I forget exactly, but it's nice. something like that, okay. right? And that's that's free. <laughs> okay. That that's been one of those people call them lead magnets for me. That's worked really well for years. So that would be an example of something that brings people kind of into my world and my my world being my email list i am an email marketer fundamentally that's what i do right and they're getting your emails every week they're like i love this every day guy. not every week every day oh nice <laughs> okay yeah. so every Super, day uh, frequency is key for email marketing yeah okay yeah and then they they read this challenge and they get your challenge and they're like that was amazing 300 swings yep. i want to continue this and then they get into your course and then they're yep. doing it monthly and then i'm assuming maybe the next and- level is like yeah, yeah, and they don't they don't always just ascend in order, right? Uh, okay, uh, sometimes okay. people people will come in at different places. Sometimes people do go right for the high end intimate stuff. Sometimes they just mm-hmm. go right. They really you know were impressed. Maybe they were following my content for a number of years, but the first purchase they make might just be one on one coaching, for example. So that's still at the top. I still do online. It's all on, everything is online. I, I don't do anything in person nice. except for particular events and certifications. So yeah, at the top we'll come back to the middle. Yeah, okay. uh, online coaching. Um, and certifications would be kind of the, the higher end stuff, right? So we, we run our strong on certification and we certify other people in our system of kettlebell training and stuff like that. And um, then they become certified kettlebell instructors under your strong program? On, strong on certified coaches. That's right. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then do they help you in, or are they now your coaches and you send them out to do coaching? Yeah, they can be. So we have different oh, okay. other back end offers from that. So they can license uh, to use our programming uh, with their own students if they want, right? Or they can come back and help oh. assist in, in workshops and certifications uh, as well. Uh, but a lot of people, t- sometimes they just, they just love the system. Uh, so it's interesting at the certification level, we have peop- other people who are professionals that really just want to learn the system for their clients. We have other people who are professionals and business owners who want to learn a system and use the system, like license it, right? And then we also just have pure hobbyists that like have just been kind of followers and fans for years, and they just really want to come and do the experience, even if they're not going to use it for any professional 
reason. So we do have a fair mix at that top. Oh, level. wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm just picturing just, I don't know, just hobbyists or just someone like me who wants to go learning to do kettlebells, but I never thought about there are actually, you know, one-on-one fitness instructors and they want to provide more value for their fitness yep. program. So they're going to go through your program and get certified in this. And now they can tell everyone, like, I'm also a certified kettlebell instructor. That's right. And that would be the majority, not the great majority, but the majority of people who do our certification are other fitness coaches and professionals, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have any, so those are pretty much your three levels. Anything else? Yeah. So going back to the middle, there's like courses and stuff like that too. But the big thing, the big thing in the middle is that subscription strong on membership page. That's sort of the flagship. Mm -hmm. Which one takes the most time and effort for you to do out of those three levels? (laughs) Yeah. Good question. Um, I feel like I'm pretty well systematized that it's, that it's all relatively efficient. Nice. Um, you know, the strong on stuff, you know, I got to sit down and I got to, got a program long-term mm-hmm. I, I, and you know, I do do, do this stuff. Um, it's my business is literally just me and my wife. So I'm not, mm. um, I'm not kicking this out to any lesser minions to, <laughs> to, <I> guess, to <laughs> put it, to put, to put it in politely. <laughs> Um, but I'm, you know, I look, like, I've been doing exercise programming for years and years. So it's just like, take, you know, that's, that's clockwork for mm-hmm. me. That's not difficult. Um, I don't know. They might, they might at the end of the day, you know, and then for private coaching, you know, there's personalized program design yeah. and there's, yeah. you know, reviewing people's logs and reviewing their techniques. Um, none of them stands out as being like the most like supremely dominant in, t- in terms of how much of my time it consumes. I would say probably, yeah, probably the middle stuff, the membership stuff is probably the majority of it, but it's not a huge, it's all, it's kind of spread out fairly evenly between all. Mm -hmm. And then do you notice a trend or like which one brings in like the most income? Yeah. The middle, the middle, the middle. Okay. For sure. So you always, because the middle is, the middle is predictable. It's recurring because that's the Mm -hmm. point of doing a, uh, but then, you know, then we'll do other sales promotions. So we might get like big surges from, doing a coaching promotion or a, a challenge or something like that. But those are by nature more cyclical, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Thanks, Pat, for allowing sure. us to dive a little bit into your business and just seeing how it works. And I think what I'm so impressed with you, you're doing all this, you know, on your own and you're keeping your family alive. Like <laughs> you have, <laughs> that's, um, what, that's what does it, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have, uh, is it five kids now or that's is it? That's right. Yeah. Five, five as of... Yeah, Brigitte was born just seven, or not even seven weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's exciting. So that's like, my goal is to use, you know, what I learned from business to, you know, grow my business and then to be able to take care of my family. So if you're able to take care of your family and to grow a business and to run a business, I applaud you and uh, that's well, amazing. Well, well, thanks, man. And like to try and, you know, I guess inspire people. I'm not a big motivational speaker. I'm just kind of <laughs> like a dumb, like I'm like a dumb practicality guy. Just like for me, business is a skill like anything else. If you want to get good yeah. at it, you just practice it and you will get good at it, right? You, you you imitate the best, you figure out the systems and you just practice and that's it. It's like a musical instrument, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but that being said, you know, I started my business when I was in college. Uh, I, you know, like I've, I've, I've got my degrees, right? But I've never used them. I've never had a real job. And that's not true. I worked at Pizza Hut when I was in high school because there was a girl I had a crush on, uh, but she quit right away. And then so I quit right away. But I've never had a real job. And my wife is home. She doesn't work. Mm-hmm. She's homeschools kids. You yeah. know, we're not like living in a huge mansion, but we're in a, you know, nice, nice part of town. Nice. You know, like it's, 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 it's what I, I've achieved what I've wanted through my business for the things that are more important to me than business. And that's key. You're developing your business around your lifestyle and you're not developing your lifestyle around your business, correct? Right. Yeah. I have, nice. I don't want a, an empire or whatever mm-hmm. people talk about, right? Uh, for me, it's a business as a way that I can provide for my family and engage in the creative things that are ultimately a lot more meaningful to me. I love, mm-hmm. I love writing my books. I love writing and producing music. I love in the middle of the day being able to go hang out with my kids and play Mario Kart if we want, mm-hmm. right? Being able to work for it. So it's, for me, it is, it's, it's almost, a, you know, I don't get me wrong. Like I enjoy what I do with my business. It's very rewarding and yeah. fulfilling, especially since it's, it's naturally tied to something I'm interested in anyways, which is physical fitness. But the way you put it is, is right. You know, the business is a part of my life. It supports my life in many ways, but my life is more than my business. And I think it's important for people to keep that perspective as well. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, that's great, Pat. Where do you, where would you like to send people to learn more about you? I would like people to see your business, which is chroniclesofstrength.com. Is that correct? That's right. And if they want to see the kind of inner workings and get into Mm -hmm. all the machinery of the email marketing, the easiest way to get on my email list is go straight to my lead magnet. I guess Uh if there's any chance to to give a shameless plug for a lead magnet, it's this, right? So go to 101kettlebellworkouts.com. That'll take you right to my lead magnet page. You can download that ebook that I talked about. That'll put you on my email list and then you'll you'll be in the world of of Pat Flynn from there. And then I've got uh, my podcast, The Pat Flynn Show, which is the fitness-based one that is most directly related to my business. But then mm-hmm. I've got the, the newer newer podcast, Philosophy for the People, which I host with my friend Jim Madden as well, which is, which, you know, that might be interesting for people to follow yeah. because that is itself something that I probably will develop uh, into its own business at some point. Right now, it's pure kind of passion content creation. Mm-hmm. But there have been some thoughts of what I might want to do with that. So people might be able to see that kind of morph and, and grow in its in its own right over time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I suggest people like to download or, you know, go to lead magnets and get on people's email lists and just see the flow and the format of how everything is doing. So I do that a lot often, especially yep. like I look at ads, like how are they pe- people like, you know, writing it out or how is their email marketing system? There's how they're scheduling it and what, what's the whole process and try to, you know, dissect it or figure it that's, out. That's so smart. You cannot do enough of that. Again, it's, it's mm-hmm. a skill like anything else. Uh, it's like, it'd be like, you want to be a musician, but you're not listening to any music. That doesn't make any mm-hmm. sense, right? <laughs> right. You want to be a, you want to make good offers, but you're not reading offers. You're not studying copywriting as much as you can. That doesn't make any sense, right? You got to do that yep. as, as often as you can, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And so I'm going to use this podcast to dive deep into people's offers and to learn about it so I can figure out how I can develop better offers for my clients and for um, my customers. And hopefully people listening will be able to develop and grow their offer as well. So again, I let's send people to 101kettlebellworkouts.com and your podcast, The Pat Flitt Show and the Philosophy of the People podcast. Yes, sir. You got it. Those would be the spots. Yep. Mm -hmm. Of course. And then, of course, I'm going to have all these links and everything in the show notes. And I did get the URL inside the offer.com and go to inside the offer.com. You can see all the show notes there and you can find Pat there and I'll have all his links to his social media and to all his websites. Thank you so much, Pat, for joining me today on Inside the Offer. It's been an honor, Nick. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Inside the Offer. If you missed any links or notes, don't worry. You can go to insidetheoffer.com slash two to see the show notes for this episode. I also want to invite you to rate and review this podcast so we can continue to build and grow our community. Next up in episode three, I have a very important conversation with Craig Dacey. Craig is a business finance coach who lays out the groundwork for setting up your business for financial success. If you ever wanted to learn about profitability in your business or what it's like to work with a personal finance coach, then keep on listening. This episode is about to begin. Hey everyone, Nick Chamberlain here, and I just wanted to let you know that we are coming out with new episodes very soon. So stay tuned, and you're going to love what we have to offer inside the offer.